Hey friends, Brandon here. The Google Pixel 4 and Pixel 4 XL are out, and once again, Google shows us that you shouldn't ever buy a Google Pixel. At least, not right away. Let me explain, because this is Tech Today. This video is sponsored in part by Privacy.com, a free service that allows you to buy things online using virtual cards instead of your actual one to protect your identity and bank information. Find out more by going to Privacy.com slash This Is Tech Today and get $5 free to use on your first purchase with Privacy.com. Make sure to share, subscribe, hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. I'd really appreciate it. Anything that I mention in this video can be found in the description, including where to get the best price on everything. So it's true that for some people, it wouldn't be a bad idea to buy a Google Pixel phone, even at lunch, which we'll talk about later. But for most people, you shouldn't buy a Google Pixel. Here's why. The Google Pixel line has notoriously had some really terrible launches every year. You can be sure to find article after article and running lists of all the issues with Google Pixel phones right after people get the phones in their hands. Here's where everything started, the original Google Pixel. Unfortunately, it had some microphone issues where it simply wouldn't record any audio. That definitely seems problematic for a phone. Apparently, there were some issues with the soldering, splitting apart, making it not work, and it was a big enough issue that there was a class action lawsuit that Google lost and had to pay $7,250,000 to settle. There was also a pretty ugly halo lens flare because the camera lens was flushed with the rest of the glass back, and software couldn't really save them on that one. Ironically, the new iPhone 11 Pro has this issue with the halo, but overall, many people have used the original Google Pixel as their main device even to this day. Now, the Google Pixel 2, or the 2XL in this case, has a really sweet spot in my heart, and it's really what got this channel going. Sadly, it was over a lot of issues with this phone. There were random reboots that Google fixed with a software update. That I mean, that would be frustrating. You're using the phone, it just restarts. There was also a really slow fingerprint scanner that they fixed with a, a, a software update. And then the camera wouldn't save photos all the time, which they also fixed with a software update. And then it even got so bad that the camera itself wouldn't even work at all, which is really unfortunate for a device that had a great reputation for having a great camera. This um was was also solved with the software update. Are we noticing a trend? And then there were also clicking noises while on a call, like someone tapping a pen on a desk over and over again. Super annoying, and unless you like that ASMR stuff. By the way, there's a channel for that. I have an ASMR unboxing channel, go, go check it out. And then the USB-C to headphone adapter wasn't working for some, which added even more salt to the wound because Google removed the headphone jack. And man, oh man, the Google Pixel 2 had some really bad screen issues, which I covered extensively in the first year of this channel. I covered the black crush issues, the black smear, blue shift, burn it, muted and unnatural colors. There's just a lot. And on top of that, I also covered how the speakers would crackle and they were also uneven because between the two speakers. Now, if you wanna find out why a ton of phones are actually moving towards this uneven speaker volume design and honestly giving you a subpar audio experience, even on Samsung phones or iPhones, check out the video up here explaining the science of audio and your phone. And on top of that, audio while recording video was a warbly garbly mess. While I loved the phone at the time, looking back on it, I just can't suggest it when there are later generations that are far more refined and polished. Speaking of that, let's look at the Google Pixel 3. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that the Google Pixel 2 had a ton of hardware issues with the screen, the speakers, and other things that couldn't be fixed with software. And it's true the Google Pixel 3 wasn't void of hardware issues. The Google Pixel 3 had issues with it scratching easily. Ugh. Well, actually, not really something that you need to freak out over. You just you just rub it off. Um, why, why was that actually an issue? Why did people freak? It's fine. It's fine. I've also found some burn-in on the screen already and noticed that the XL model continues to have a better display over the smaller version, which I found to be kind of grainy. It's a bit splotchy and darker in its colors. On the bigger ones, they use Samsung displays and on the smaller ones, they use LG displays. But beyond just those couple of hardware issues, the main thing was that the Pixel 3 had a ton of software issues. While you wouldn't want to freak out over scratches, you would want to freak out over the terrible RAM management on the phone. While many other phones at the time had six gigabytes or more of RAM, the Google Pixel 3 only had four, and it honestly showed. Apps would constantly close early while you were using them, photos and videos wouldn't save, and so much more. It was just a mess. On top of that, the camera would take a very long time to open, or it wouldn't open at all because of a fatal error. And then your SMS messages would just be deleted. There are even severe issues with the way audio sounded on the Google Pixel 3 when recording video. And ironically, it would sound fine if you use the Playground AR app. 
And probably the most hilarious thing is the second notch that would show up in software without any rhyme or reason. That's low key the most hilarious bug to happen. People hated the notch so much that Google was just like, have another. <laughs> But the most frustrating experience I had was where the screen wouldn't turn back on when you're on a call, effectively making it impossible to hang up on someone unless you force a restart. I would move the phone away from my head and it would stay black. XDA Developers has a huge list of all the issues found in the Google Pixel 3, which is kind of insane. And uh, 9to5Google also has a huge list too. And that brings us to Google's latest and greatest, at least in my opinion, the Google Pixel 4. But it isn't without its flaws. Oh no, there is no perfect phone out there. You can actually hear my initial review of the Google Pixel 4 in my video up here or in the link in the description. With the Google Pixel 4, we thankfully don't have nearly as many issues and much of it can be adjusted or fixed with software, which just means that Google's hardware is getting better every year. Notice how in terms of hardware, the two is pretty dang bad, but the three wasn't as bad, and then the four is not nearly as bad. This year, you have the fact that you can unlock the phone using face unlock, regardless of whether you're looking at the phone or not. An awareness feature like what you can find on an iPhone would be really great. And just so you know, Google has already been working on that for quite some time before the launch, and it will be coming out in the upcoming months. This year brought you the new 90 hertz smooth display feature, but also had an aggressive ramping down to 60 hertz, kind of negating the whole smooth feature that they're advertising so much. This was particularly apparent when they lowered the brightness below 75%. Google said that this was to conserve battery and also maintain a consistent color throughout the brightness range. This is something that they already addressed in a software update. Oh, uh, by the way, I have a tips and tricks video for the Google Pixel 4 up here if you wanna learn more about the lesser known tips and features of this phone. Sadly, the one hardware issue is with the oleophobic coating, the thing that makes the screen really smooth and repel smudges and water and things like that. It's just wearing off quickly. In fact, it seems like many people seem to have a spot on their display that was completely missed in the manufacturing here right at the top edge of the screen. You're gonna hate knowing about this, but rub your finger along the top of the screen and see if it has a spot right here to the right of the earpiece. That's the only big inconsistent hardware issue that I know of. You might know of more, so I guess leave a comment down below. It's kind of astounding that Google would have so many issues in all their phones. They make Android and they have a ridiculous amount of money available to them, yet they continue to have issues to the point that all of us seem to be ready to create a list of all the issues with the Google Pixel. But in context, it seems like the Google Pixel 4 has fewer issues than previous generations, and the gripes that people have tend to be more about decisions that are made by Google in terms of its design and specs. Now, speaking of decisions that people aren't thrilled about, here's my least favorite. It's the pre-order price penalty. It's probably the most painful reason for why you shouldn't buy a Google Pixel phone, at least at launch. Time and time time again. Google prices their phones far above what they should be to give an appearance of being premium and to position it next to that of the iPhone and without earning the reputation yet for that. And then they would drop the price of it by hundreds of dollars only a month or so later for the holidays and after the return period closes. In fact, Google dropped the price of the Google Pixel 4 and 4XL by $200 this year. And some carriers and stores will give you even more on top of that. If the pass is any indication, this sale will continue to persist for a very long time as a functional price cut that will eventually become permanent. You might even see a buy one, get one deal at carriers in the not too distant future. And you might even get added items alongside it like the Nest Hub. It seems like Google Pixel phones spend more time at a discount than at the original price, which is truly a bit of a spit in the face for early adopters who are the most diehard fans. Yes, I know some of you are already in the comments saying that that's the cost of getting it early, but how often do you see someone buy something and then the price drops so much only a month later? Even if you disagree with it, at least have some empathy. So Google, change up this stupid practice. You've already created a narrative that your phones are overpriced when you launch it for $200 more than what you really are going to sell it for. Just price it right from the start and don't drop the price until a few months later. It'll make you more competitive because you priced it better from the start and you won't burn your most devoted customers. I say this even as someone who has given the Google Pixel 4 XL for free from Google, and I'm totally grateful for this gift from Google, but I still have to buy so many of my other phones on my own to make content here on this channel. Much like most of you, I really hate it when I spend more than I have to or lose out on a good deal. It really makes me feel like I've been 
ripped off, especially because I really try to handle my money well. And one of the ways I've been trying to do that is by using a virtual burner card for my subscriptions from this video sponsor, privacy.com. I just signed up for Disney Plus and wanted to cancel my Netflix subscription, but I wasn't sure the exact date of when my billing period would end. Instead of digging around trying to figure out that date, it was easier for me to create a burner card on privacy.com for free so that the next charge wouldn't go through. I maxed out every day that I had left and it only took me a minute to set up. I love privacy.com because it is free, it protects my personal information, and it makes it easy to handle trials and subscriptions, and they've gotten even better with their new premium pro and team tiers. For only $10 a month, you can create up to 36 cards a month instead of the normal 12, and with even more security and privacy features. And you get 1% cash back on all of your purchases. You could essentially have a pro subscription for free or even make a profit just from cash back rewards. And if you're a business, privacy.com has a teams tier for $25 a month that adds even more on top of your pro version. Instead of 36 cards a month, you get 60 cards a month, a dedicated account management, and can set transaction limits tailored to your business needs. With a ton of employees making purchases, you definitely want to make sure that you can control their spending and protect your company's finances. Whether you're just some dude in a bedroom like me or an executive in a boardroom, privacy.com is an insanely easy and powerful tool to protect your identity and finances. Sign up now by going to privacy.com slash this is tech today and get $5 free off of your first purchase with them. Now, not everything is bad about buying a Google Pixel, especially if you want to buy it early. Sometimes Google does give you added bonuses for pre-ordering like a $100 gift card, which some people are okay with, but it's not my preference, but you may like it. Honestly, the best part about pre-ordering is usually to get a first-hand look at Google's vision of Android and its feature. You're able to utilize the new Google Assistant, the new forms of interaction with the device like face unlock or motion sense on the Pixel 4, which I also covered at length in a video in a card up here. There's a lot more that it has the potential to do. There's also Google Duplex, where you can have the Google Assistant make a reservation for you or call screening, which came out with the Google Pixel 3. That stuff is truly an exciting thing. When Google pulls off software well, they really make it feel like you're in the future. That's a feature that you can experience before everyone else by pre-ordering, but you also experience when Google doesn't pull off software well. Some people may like finding all the issues and contributing to the community by finding them so Google can fix it. And that is something I have to admit about the Google Pixel community over others. Most of the time, those in the community are helpful and nice to each other. And you don't always get that kind of experience in other communities, especially with any of those in the Samsung community. So if you like helping others out and contributing towards making a product better, pre-ordering a Google Pixel phone may not be a bad thing for you, especially since Google seems to be more involved than other companies with customer feedback. That doesn't mean that they always respond well, uh, they definitely don't always do that, but they interact more than what I see from Apple or Samsung. Beyond that, this year Google had the orange color as a limited edition color, which I leaked out before on this channel before the announcement of the phone. If you wanted this color, you had to pre-order right away as it sold out quite fast and is still sold out. You can buy one off of eBay or Swap Up, but a lot of those have inflated prices. Another route if you don't want to miss out is getting a skin for your phone from the channel sponsor dbrand. You can even make that shiny black color matte black like it should have been or go with any of the other colors they offer on their site. There's a link in the description if you want to pick some of those out. With all that said, if price is really an issue for you and you really don't need a lot, it might be worth waiting maybe eight whole months for the Pixel 4a. That's if we were to look at when the Google Pixel 3a came out, which was in May. So patience may be to your benefit. Even then, the Google Pixel 3a is a fantastic phone that hits all the main things right. As I said in my review of the Pixel 3a, which you can check out up here, it has an incredible delight to dollar ratio. Of course, there are links in the description for that or anything else that I mentioned in this video if you want to pick it up. So what are your thoughts? Did you pre-order the Google Pixel 4? Did you feel ripped off by the price drop? Or did you wait until the holiday price drop before picking it up? Are you bothered by the software and hardware issues found on the Google Pixel phones at launch? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And while you're at it, join the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat server. We're a helpful and kind community and we'd love to have you. Thank you for watching This Is Tech Today where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.